Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to share some brand new cards with you featuring all new products from the Simon Says Stamp Holly Jolly release. I'm going to be sharing some embossing folder techniques with their new embossing folders, as well as some fun foiling tips for sentiments that I've added to my cards. With these great new embossing folders, I am going to be doing a little bit of inking to really make that embossing pop. So all of my cards feature a different embossing folder background. I'm going to start by kind of showing you the different embossing folders. This is the Lumen. So pretty. We have tumbled hexagons. The poinsettia oval, which I have to tell you was kind of a surprise. I didn't know that I'd love it as much as I did. I think this might be one of my favorite cards that I created today, this one, and also the forest border, which I did think that would be my favorite just off the bat, mostly because I love anything that's a good scene builder, and I think that forest border is a great scene builder. Then there is the beautiful fall fo foliage, and then this great peony. That is the only one I didn't create a card with today. And then the all over floral um, field, which I did create a sympathy card with that. We are gonna start with the forest border and I'm going to go ahead and place this in my embossing folder using some white cardstock, and then we're gonna run it through a Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine. Now, I think it really would have worked better if I had two metal shims, but I actually only have one. So I ran it through with one shim. And the impression isn't super great. In fact, I'm going to show it to you. It's not bad, but the trees in the background were not as crisp as I wanted. They're not going to be quite as deep and dark as the evergreens in the front, but I, I still want them to show up a little bit, and I just felt like they were still kind of flat. So a good tip for this, if you don't have two metal shims, I am going to actually take a sheet of cardstock, and this is thick cardstock, it's 110 pound weight. I'm going to use that as my second shim. And I used the whole sheet right here, but actually what I found worked even better later on was I cut this in half, so it's actually two cardstock shims, a metal shim, and then my embossing folder before the platform. Um, kind of have to play around with these to see what works in your die cutting machine, but look how great that looks right there. So I'm going to quickly just kind of show one of my favorite things to do with these embossing folders, and that's to take a flat inking tool. So the foam ink blending tools from Ranger are going to work great here. This is some iced spruce distress ink, and we're going to add color only to the embossed areas or try to keep it mostly to the embossed areas. I'm using a pretty light hand. I'm pouncing off some of that ink onto my glass mat work surface before I take it to the cardstock. And the trees in the background, I purposely went super, super light there but the trees in the foreground are a little bit darker and I love how it gives you that winter scene. Next, with the floral field embossing folder, we're gonna do much the same thing. So I went ahead and embossed that off camera and then I'm gonna take Wild Honey Distress Ink and we are going to ink up these beautiful flowers. Again, I'm pouncing off a lot of ink onto my work surface and then bringing the foam ink blending tool over to my cardstock adding in that color and you can see the embossed areas just grab that color beautifully and that definitely is darker. For this card, I didn't worry quite so much about inking in the background at, at all um, simply because I wasn't trying to really give it that wintry forest feel. It's an all over floral design, but I am trying to keep it mostly on there. And then we're gonna take some gathered twigs with a little tiny foam blending tool and I'm just gonna very, very lightly add the ink to the flower centers. You actually don't have to use much pressure at all. There were a few areas that I got a little overzealous with my inking and so I 
try to kind of get rid of that as much as possible with my ink blending tool, but I didn't worry about it a ton. This is pretty organic. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're not coloring, um, quote unquote. So I just tried to keep it as much to those flower centers as possible. I have to say the background here turned out really amazing. I love this so much. Um, another beautiful, beautiful embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp. And this can work for so many occasions. Really anything I'm using here today, um, maybe with the exception of the poinsettia, can really be used for all kinds of different cards. Even that forest border does not have to be winter. Um, but very versatile, fantastic embossing folders. Embossing folders are really making a comeback. We're starting to see them um, all kind of all over the place. They're starting to pop up and I'm I for one am excited. I loved embossing folders years ago. I had tons of them. I used them with my cuddle bug. Does anyone remember? Maybe you still have a cuddle bug. I know some of you have mentioned to me you still have it. Mine bit the dust uh, years ago, probably from overuse, but that's, you know, that's okay. Um, so I'm excited. And these new embossing folders are just so incredible. Okay, fall foliage. Oh my goodness, I love this one. Now I started off kind of trying to keep the ink to certain areas. And this is going to be one where we are using multiple colors of ink. So it's pretty messy, it's a little blotchy. Don't worry about that. We're just gonna keep layering on the ink. And for this one, it's totally fine if ink gets on the background. In fact, that kind of helps heighten and showcase the leaves a little bit. We are using um, Crackling Campfire, Wild Honey, Rusty Hinge, Peeled Paint, and Gathered Twigs Distress Inks. Not the oxides, just the distress inks here. So good. I did work a little bit slower, really worked on kind of just adding a little bits of color here and there to get that fall kind of look. I don't know what it is, but Simon has really had some awesome fall leaf products. And I know we're all ramping up and gearing up for holidays and holiday crafting and all of the good holiday stuff, but I am super excited to see that we're still featuring and um, including some of these fall kinds of products in the releases. I think this will make such a pretty Thanksgiving card and I'm really thrilled with how it turned out. So I'm just going to keep layering on that ink until we get everything covered and then I'm even going to go back and do a little bit more blending. So there's a lot of blending going on here, but you will see in the finished card, again, those raised areas just kind of catch the ink and really deepen and darken and you get some incredible effects with this. The flowers the, that I just used, that would be another one that uh, flower or floral field, pardon me, that would be one where I think it would look really cool if you did a whole bunch of different colors with that instead of all one and give it a completely different look. Okay, so this is pretty much the cards that I did where I embossed first on white cardstock and then I added ink. You even could use some lighter colors of cardstock and ink on top of it. That's another idea. Next, we're going to do a little bit more of what I call a messy technique. And I it's messy because I got ink kind of all over my hands, which I notice I do that a lot, so that's nothing really out of the normal, but we're going to actually be applying ink to the embossing folder and then running it through our die cutting machine and it's going to press the ink into or onto the cardstock. And the results for that are super cool as well. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that I did this for some card backgrounds. We're gonna start with the Lumen. 
and we're gonna start with some Cotton Candy Simon Says Stamp cardstock, and we're inking it up with Simon Says Stamp Hot Lips ink. So it's gonna be kind of a tone on tone where it's kind of this darker pinky red color on pink cardstock for a very kind of modern looking holiday card is what this one's gonna end up. Again, this could be anything. Now I accidentally set my card stuck down and knew it wasn't centered. So I just popped it up really fast and we're just going to flip it over. No one's going to know that we started there on the back and it didn't look good. When I run it through the machine, look at this. So anywhere I added the ink, it just pressed it right into the card stock as it embossed it. So easy. Next, I'm going to apply some Audrey Blue ink to the Poinsettia Oval Embossing Folder. And you might be thinking blue for a Poinsettia, but it, I promise it's going to look great. And I also added the ink to the flat side of this. And then I ran it through my die cutting machine. I'm going to do the same thing to the tumbled hexagons. We're going to apply the ink all over to this place some fog cardstock in here, and then run this through our die cutting machine. And it's going to apply that ink all over. It may look a little blotchy. This is dye ink. That's totally okay. It will smooth out as that ink dries. So let's make sure we clean our embossing folders really good. And I'm going to show you all six of the backgrounds I created really quick. And then we are going to make cards with all of them. I have my mink machine. You just need a laminator here and I'm going to warm it up. I also have lots of scraps of deco foil and I'm going to use some toner sheets because I want to make my own foiled die cut shapes. So if you want to make your own and not just use maybe something that you have that's toner toner inked, this is a great way to do that. And there are some great new dies from Simon Says Stamp that we're going to use to create some really fun card designs. We're going to be foiling the Joy script and we are going to be foiling a brand new sentiment strips slimline Christmas strip. I know I'm not creating slimline cards, but they are going to work, which is super exciting. And this silver foil, I'm using a scrap, but this is the sparkling silver foil, fancy foil from Gina K for Thermoweb. Oh my gosh, my favorite. I love it. So we're going to foil some black toner sheet and I just trimmed a little piece and we're going to foil that and then die cut it. And then I have a sentiment strip and I know I have another video I'm linking at the end of this one. I, so if you want to check that out, it has more foiling techniques, but you can foil the sentiment strips because they are printed on uh, with toner ink on cardstock. So I especially love the sentiment strips that are all over black with the white text. So it's like a black box that's printed in toner, which means it's going to give you a lot more surface area that is foiled. I foiled it in red. Looks so, so good, you guys. So here is my die cut that has been foiled. Now I think it needs a little bit more dimension. Again, this is the Joy Script die and it has a shadow as well. I am going to die cut it two more times from smooth white cardstock, glue them one on top of another to give it a little bit of dimension, and then we are going to adhere the joy to a die cut vellum shadow. This has, while it has a huge impact with this forest border, there's not a ton of inking, and I don't wanna cover it all up with a huge outline. Vellum is my favorite thing to use when I still want to have that shadow, but I don't want to cover up the whatever's going on in the background a whole lot. So we'll die cut that shadow. We'll stack the joy one on top of another, glue that all down in place. And then we can adhere that in our sentiment strip to our panel. It's going to be super, super simple 
but so beautiful and effective. And then there's these new sequins from Simon and I'm gonna be using those, some little snowflakes from that on my card and I'll just embellish the center with some clear gemstones. This is the peppermint sequin mix if you're wondering exactly which one that is. It's so pretty. Lots of pinks and reds and kind of an iridescent color, but works really, really nice. And we're just gonna kind of glue this all down in place. And then I wanna overlap my sentiment strip. However, because it's popped up on several layers, I really feel like I, I don't wanna bring my foam adhesive underneath the sentiment strip all the way over because that's going to be wonky. So I'm going to lay down the joy first, glue that down in place, and then we're going to put foam adhesive under most of the sentiment strip, but not the end part. We'll just put a little liquid adhesive so it lays nice and stays where it's supposed to go over the joy where it overlaps. And that is going to look so much better. Let's add a little glue. I'm hiding it back behind the die cut piece so you don't see it through the vellum. And look how pretty that sparkle silver looks over our forest border. So simple, so pretty, but it turns out so nice. And then that nice pop of red with that sentiment strip. And then we'll just add these great little snowflake sequins using an embellishment wand to easily pick them up and pop them down in place. And then I felt like the centers did need a little embellishing and these are some Honeybee Stamps Crystal Clear Gems. You could also use Nouveau Crystal Drops in the center if you don't have gems or any kind of gem or maybe even layer on a smaller sequin on top. Then we're just gonna take a side fold card base and place this on top and it completely covers the front. I didn't trim this background down at all. It measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So next up, let's create some more foiling for our cards. So I have that same piece of sparkling silver foil and we're actually going to die cut another Joy that's brand new for this Holly Jolly release. This is the Chunky Joy die. And I did, went ahead this time because I'm trying to use up the rest of this scrap of foil. I die cut the letters or that die from some of the toner sheet first and then I just laid it on my foil and ran it through the machine. I've got another piece of foil. This is an orange scrap. It's kind of a sparkly orange that I have. I'm going to die cut the thankful die. That is not a new die from Simon Says Stamp, but I think it's a really good one. I did go have to pull a few things from my stash just so I could show some other kinds of cards and maybe not just holiday. We're gonna foil the thankful looks so so good and you still have so much foil left i keep all these little pieces because you can see how you can use it so well this with sympathy die also was a great one to foil that's something else that was previously released and we're just foiling these from all different kinds of scraps of foil you can use anything you have there now I am going to take my hexagon background and also the lumen background and we're gonna take the brand new Peace die and Chunky Mary die. I did go ahead and foil those off camera. It was just running die cut toner paper through my laminator to foil those pieces. And then for the Chunky Mary, I did die cut that from Smooth White cardstock as well. And we're going to take the outline and glue that down right on the lumen background here. 
And then we have a sentiment strip again, I think from the sentiment strips Slimline Christmas. This one was foiled in red and that's going to be adhered right below the Mary. Now, because the sentiment in this case and the sentiment strip are so big and bold, we're really going to make our sentiments the star of the show against the beautiful foiling or pardon me embossing and inking of that background but what I did to give this a really modern flair and feel because it is a red on pink which already is that modernish type of Christmas look I foiled the letters for Mary from a kind of blue foil in the exact names they are listed and linked below here because I don't I know I'm not saying the right colors but there's a blue a green and a red and I love how the blue green and red look against the pink I think it's super fun I did keep the white insert from the outline and I'm going to lay that in it's just going to give our letters a little bit more of a dimensional feel because that toner paper is pretty thin there is an outline for this chunky Mary. I did not use it on my card, but I did want to let you know that there is that. I trimmed down the background to four by five and a quarter inches. I popped up my sentiment strip with foam adhesive, and then we're going to take some of those peppermint sequins and just adhere those to the card. Just a few little, like kind of, I think, five clusters of those, and that is it beautiful bold foiled sentiment against this this awesome embossed background creates such a beautiful card design now the piece card i am going to complete most of it here but it kind of sat there and i just felt like it needed a little something so at the end of the video i left it kind of where I was working so I could think on it while I was designing the rest of the cards because we are going to add just a little um, holly and berry die cut image to this that I think is going to dress it up nice. So again for the piece die I die cut it from the toner paper and ran it through with red foil die cut it two more times from smooth white cardstock and stack them one on top of another and then we have our white outline that we are going to use because I do think it really helps make the piece show up against the green and gray of our background and then I have a sentiment strip from that sentiment strips slimline Christmas that was foiled with gold foil and popped up underneath the piece there so again, it looks a little blah, it looks a little plain right now, but never fear, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you with just the addition of a tiny little bit, how much of a difference that makes in the overall card design. We have one more Christmas card after this, and then I'm going to do a thankful and a sympathy card. So this next card actually ended up being one of my favorites. I love how the inking looked and how it kept the poinsettia and the frame, frame oval kind of um, almost highlights it in a way, even though that's the actual cardstock color is that nice, beautiful Simon Says Stamp Sea Glass. And then the Audrey Blue was inked when you ran it through. So it's so, so beautiful. We are going to use our Chunky Joy as a guide. We are going to use all those pieces, but I'm just going to set that aside for a second while I stamp some greetings now from the Chunky Christmas stamp set. We are going to stamp wishing you peace and, and then the rest of that will be Joy, our die cut. And then I'm going to stamp Merry Christmas underneath with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. This is just gonna round it out really nicely, I feel. And this is a card that, again, didn't require much. It is amazing what an embossing folder and a little bit of ink will do. All you need is some sentiments and you are done. And it wouldn't even have to be die cut. You could stamp whatever you like to do there. So really, really fun. This is that Chunky Joy nice big bold absolutely love it we are going to use the white 
inserts just like we did for the chunky Mary card and then we'll pop up our foiled joy greetings on top of this and again those were foiled with that awesome sparkling silver deco foil that I just can't get enough of because it has all these little stars in it which I think are really really cute don't forget the little insert piece here to finish off the outline I did trim this background down to four by five and a quarter inches as well placed it on a white top fold card base and added a little scattering of those snowflake sequins from the peppermint sequin mix our final two cards I did foil all of the sentiments here so the thankful one and the with sympathy I showed those a little bit ago those were foiled with different colors of deco foil scraps I had we're going to add these to the white outline again I did die cut both sentiments from white cardstock as well we're stacking it up so there's three layers for each and then placing it on the shadow background and then we're going to adhere those to our cards thankful has a vellum background with sympathy has a white and I don't know if you can tell but with sympathy is actually two different colors of foil with is gold our sentiment strip is gold and then the sympathy is a I'm not sure what it is it's a scrap I had left over from the um, November Simon Says Stamp card kit it had deco foil in it I did a whole video on that I am linking to that to at the end of this one but this is just a scrap of foil from that I hold on to all those little parts and pieces and it comes in so stinking handy now for the thankful card I am going to stamp a little sentiment from the Simon Says Stamp Days of Thankful stamp set that says for everything so the whole greeting will be thankful for everything we're going to stamp that with clear embossing ink heat emboss with antique gold embossing powder and then pop or die cut that with a nested banners Simon Says Stamp die and then we're going to pop that up with foam adhesive and then we've got our sentiment strips thinking of you that we foiled with gold and I used I'll be praying for you that we're going to add underneath the with sympathy so again they don't need a whole lot I will add some little a uh, little one little clay heart to the sympathy card and a little trio to the thankful card but other than that you guys that is it these cards do not require tons and tons of embellishing because the beautiful embossing folder and ink really is our embellishment for all of these card designs today so remember the peace card I knew I needed something else for that we are going to use the chunky trees and I'm going to use the little uh, berries and leaves image I'm not going to use the shadow we're just going to use the inlay I'm going to die cut that from white and then also from red and green Lawn Fawn holiday sparkle cardstock we're going to inlay all those little pieces just tuck that right there next to our sentiment and then I did take both the peppermint and then the other the green sequin mix that's also brand new for the Holly Jolly release and we're going to layer a little trio of sequins to finish off the card and it's amazing to me with what just that tiny little um, extra to this card what a difference it makes for the finished design I feel like it's a complete holiday card now and it turned out so great one of the things about using foil is I don't think they translate super great in photos first of all they're really hard to photograph and also in video because just the lights and the lights in my studio just to make sure that my area is lit really well doesn't always make for showing how beautiful these are in person I am gonna just kind of walk you through all six card designs here at the end of the video hopefully it gives you a little bit better idea of just how beautiful they are in real life there is our with sympathy card hopefully you can kind of see the texture there for that floral background oh beautiful leaves the poinsettia 
just so much fun. The lumen background, our forest border, of course, and then the hexagon. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these six cards featuring embossing folder techniques using new products from the Simon Says Stamp Holly Jolly release. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring foiling that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate you and I am so glad you're here. We'll see you next time.